Welcome. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Bob. I am director of St. James's Episcopal Church in West Hartford, Connecticut. If you keep watching this, what you are about to see is our Easter offering to you. This is our attempt to help you celebrate Easter in this time of social separation due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This program was the idea of our organist and choir master, Vaughn Morin. What we have put together is the reading of one of the Gospels assigned for Easter morning. In this case, John 20, verses 1 through 18. A reflection on that reading, some music played by Vaughn on the St. James's organ, and some prayers. Now for the disclaimers. This is not meant to be a liturgical experience. This is, there is plenty of liturgy streaming out there already. It is meant to be an opportunity to think, meditate, and pray on the resurrection of Jesus. If you know me, you know that I was not built for this type of preaching. My preaching style and sermons are built on the spirit and energy of the congregation present. In this case, there is only two of us in this very large sanctuary, myself and Vaughn, who is also playing the role not only of just organist, but as cameraman, director, producer, and sound expert. And I thank him from the bottom of my heart for all his efforts and creativity on your behalf. And don't worry, we are standing quite a distance from each other so as to stay safe and healthy in this strange time. I would like to close this welcome with a few personal thoughts. These are very difficult and frightening times we are living through. What we need to do now is stay in and stay safe. Help support all those who, because of their jobs and responsibilities, cannot. Stay connected with your friends, family, and those who are alone during this time. This is a time of social separation. Please do not make it a time of social and emotional isolation. And I look forward to the day when we can gather together again and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. In the meantime, blessings, and stay safe, and stay, stay healthy. And remember, no matter who you are, you are a beloved child. She ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter the other, and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrapping, black wrappings lying there. But he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, 
but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood there weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the foot. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around, and she saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But to go to your brothers and to say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her, the gospel of the Lord. Holy God, send your spirit upon us, fill our hearts and our minds and our imaginations with your love. There are a few things that I know for certain. One is that God has no gender. God is bigger than that. And to box God in is to deny the vastness of the Holy One. Another thing I know for certain is that Jesus was a God. I can prove it in five short words. Woman, why are you weeping? Only a man would ask a woman alone in the cemetery why she's crying. For Mary, this has been a horrible week. He had told them that bad things were about to happen, that he would be separated from them, that he would be unjustly accused, falsely convicted, tortured, and murdered. But they could not get their heads around this, nor did they even really seem to believe him. It just could not be true. It was just too horrible to be true. But now this. They had taken everything away from her. Her best friend, her teacher, her companion, her Lord. They had committed to follow him. But now he had gone somewhere they could not follow. The only thing she could do now for him was to come to the tomb and prepare him in his death. Now they have denied her even this. They have taken the body away, but why? To inflict even more pain? Her despair, her sorrow is palpable. Everything has changed. Everything seems lost and out of control. It is into this darkest of places into her absolute despair that Jesus reaches out to her. He does this with that simplest yet most personal thing, her name, Mary. Not a question, not just a word, but a lifeline. A lifeline built of hope, friendship, and love. Jesus meets Mary in 
her sadness, in her grief. And he joins her there so that they may walk into the light together. In this moment of our darkness and fear and isolation, not knowing what the future holds, Jesus reaches out to us in the simplest of ways. A quick phone call to check in, a text, an email, a child's precious art, a funny meme or a beautiful landscape, a prayer, a wave from across the street by a fellow dog walker, in our cares and concerns for others, and in our willingness to allow others to care for us, we participate in the resurrection of Jesus daily. Resurrection, that moment when God's love overcomes darkness, fear, and division. We will get through this moment of ours in the garden, this moment of loss, and fear, and we will do it together. Walking hand in hand, maybe a few feet away from each other for now, but we will walk together from darkness into light. Jesus is with us now in our fear, our sorrow, our confusion, and in our pain. Jesus is also with us now in our hopes, in our joys, in our laughter, and in our loves. At the moment, we may feel very much like Mary, lost and alone. But Jesus is right in front of us, calling us each by name. Amen. Happy Easter. Stay safe and stay healthy. Responsibility is overwhelming. The untapped anger cannot be borne. Hear our cry, O God of love, for all so trapped in fear. Open our hearts to trust your presence, to guide us in unknown places. Teach us to know you will support us in all we undertake. Free us to share with you the rage within, knowing you will never desert us. In the name of Jesus, who understands our fears, we cry to you. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with all of us this day and always.